from the Department of Communication in Phillipsburg. This is a special edition of Inside Government with Cedric Peterson. To our audience here at home and around the world, you are now Inside Government. As you are aware, we are continuing in our series of the 10th anniversary of Public Service Center, honoring service to you, the people of St. Martin. And of course, you remember the department spoke about working with various other organizations uh, or departments within the organization that render service to you, the people of St. Martin. So our next guest in this edition is uh, Mr. Silvanico Pauletta. He's no stranger, of course, to inside government. Um, he's the disaster management expert and, of course, um, a part of the section PPAO, that's Prevention, Preparation, Training, and Education at the Fire Department of St. Martin. Mr. Pauletta, great to have you once again in the program. CJ. Thank you very much for having me and audience. I'm looking forward to this interview. We have invited you in once again. You, first of all, graced us with your presence when we were talking about making sure we were prepared for the hurricane season. Our guest in that edition was the, uh, the folks from V&K International. We were getting ready for the Hurex exercise for 2023. Yes. Uh, that's now past us. And now we have you back again to talk about specifically the discipline of services rendered by the fire department. Um, which one would be like, okay, what extra services do the fire department um, get involved in? But before we get into it, I want to give you the opportunity to remind us, fire department St. Martin, what is that department's focus when serving countries at Martin? Well, uh, thank you, Cedar, for that question. The, uh, indeed, the fire department's main responsibility is to prevent damage, injuries, and loss of true death. So um, next, we do that usually by responding, but that's more the reactive part, after the fact. Um, th then there is where prevention and preparedness comes in, where we actually um, try to prevent the, the injuries or death by um, introducing building codes, introducing also safe behavior, to prevent any accidents or incidents where people could actually lose their, their life or lose their property. Yeah, and it's important that um, that's exactly the focus, to start with the prevention aspect. So training is involved, not only for yourself and your colleagues at the fire department, but we also get the community involved. Explain how the fire department focuses on engagement with the community to help in the area of prevention. Well. The fire department is known for decades of um, visiting schools. So we target the youth and you, we actually we bring, we leave the youth, bring it home, bring the knowledge home by educating them on fire safe behavior, having an emergency plan at home. I think we will be going a little bit deeper into that later on. And also we target the, the adult because there's one thing to leave the youth, bring the knowledge home. But if the adults are not aware of it, um, the knowledge of the youth might be just be brushed aside. So that's why it's very important also to address the adults, which we have done in the past through um, visiting community centers, having um, PSAs, and it's still, it's still work in progress. Of course. And one of the things we have seen is, is uh, has been one of the biggest successes was our open house, where we have we had in the past 500, over 500 persons visiting the fire department and learning about fire safety on the last Sunday of October. And I was happy to see that uh, last year after COVID, we were ab able to house the public again, and we had over 700 visitors. Wow. So, so it is a, su a growing success. It's interesting, 500, 700, and people need to understand that those numbers in our small community is significant. Yes. Why do you think such a great interest? I think um, when it comes to safety, people are interested to, to be safe. And also, yes, the fire department always has, been, has had a great appeal to the youth. And um, so when it, there's the opportunity for the youth to be able to drive on the right, right, take a ride on the fire truck, um, visit the fire station, meet the firemen, and it, 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 it is a formula for success. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a fantastic um, career choice 
um, if, if a young person actually chooses it after high school. And I wanted to get into that conversation with you. Uh, what does the fire department look for in a candidate to become a fire fighter? Well, when we when we um, have the applicants apply, we inform that you need to have a, at least a high school diploma. You should have finished high school. That's one. But most of all, we look at the attitude. You know, are you are you looking for a job, an income, or are you really looking to serve? And there's qu- there are quite some people are, that are interested to serve the public. We. We hear often that they're saying that hey, people are getting more individualistic, they're getting more materialistic, but still there are people who want to serve and help others. Right. And those are the people we're looking for. And it's a team effort because um, when you're out there dealing with any type of disaster situation, even the most common, which is a fire within itself, it's a team effort that's involved. Yes, indeed. The, the only reason why we can deal with the risks that we face during an incident is because we work in a team. We need to have each other's back. We need to, we need to know um, what will be the other person's next move. And uh, therefore, we have all the tr- education and training um, put in place. We train and educate according to certain standards. And, and um, it's important to know that the other one is knowledgeable, is skillful, and also is in the right frame of mind. Absolutely. When, when we face fire, whether we face fire or whether we use in the jaws of life to keep, take somebody out of a car. Physical and mental capabilities. Uh, when you are going in that training trajectory, uh, what is involved? Or take us through that. Uh, if someone is looking to apply and the training begins, how does that training process start? From here um, into the kingdom, explain. Yes. So... The, when, a fire, when a person applies, as I said earlier, we go to a selection. And once the person is selected, first of all, they have to get on the payroll of government. So now once that is set, once they're on the payroll, that means also they're insured for doing the job. Because even though we have no record of... Um, firefighters being seriously injured during incidents is still a very riskful job. Yeah, of course. And yeah. hence, therefore, we have the education and the training to prevent these, these, these kind of injuries to personnel. So once they start, we educate them on their role, on regulation. So, and after that, we go into incident response. They get, they get, uh, get to learn uh, what are the risks start to learn also how to recognize risk and they get to know the procedures how to, and how to work in a team. Also, we address the physical part because it's a physical job. So we also make sure that they're in the condition because it's nearly like a sport. Of course. They're practically professional athletes. <laughs> <laughs> and next to, next to, Next to, um, one, once they finish that, they actually go into the shifts to work with the shifts. And there is where they can apply and also where we have time now to observe if it's a match. Because um, people will get a temporary contract during that period, you see, if not only the fire department, but the person self also could see if the job is really for them. And once, once uh, evaluation is completed, they get, they get to be hired as, as a full-fledged firefighter. Once they're a full-fledged firefighter, that means any kind of I- I- incidents that the fire, uh, the fire department is called for, that the fire truck has to be dispatched, they are able to respond to. So whether it's a, a house fire, whether it's, it's a um, person trapped in an elevator or trapped in a car or even if it's a small um, hazmat, a, a spill with a hazardous material, mm-hmm. they can respond. And so that, that is the, the initial function within the fire, fire department, the firefighters in the truck. And 
the fire department is based on them, on them because they are the ones who are carrying out the rescue work. Now, as they grow in their career, they could become a pumper. They become more specialized firefighters where they could do pumps, where they could use specialized equipment or even carry out specialized tasks like high angle rescue and those, those kind of tasks. As they proceed, now they they could continue to grow into a more senior function where they're going to become more of a leader, a coordinator, a supervisor, and eventually become captain of a truck. Step-by-step process there, and I'm sure there's so much more involved. We're going to take our first break as our conversation with Savannah Copaletta is going to continue. He's the disaster management expert and Section PPL, who's responsible for prevention, preparation, training, and education at our fire department of St. Martin. St. Martin, stay with us. You're inside government. During the hurricane season, patients with chronic long-term diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, and others who need to follow a specific diet are reminded to ensure that their hurricane kit includes two weeks of non-perishable foods that allow them to continue to follow their recommended diet. These patients should also have extra medication and medical supplies and continue to use them as prescribed by their house doctor or other treating physician during and after the hurricane. These items vary per patient, so patients should contact their doctor to find out what the most suitable foods for their conditions are. If you have a family member or a friend who takes prescribed medications or needs to follow a specific diet, call, text, or pass by them to make sure that they're prepared. This message has been brought to you by the Samaritan Medical Center and the Department of Communication. During the hurricane season, a potential tropical cyclone can produce rainfall that can cause flash flooding and rock falls. Stay away from flood-prone areas during heavy rainfall, such as Jump Up Casino on Emil Plain Road in Phillipsburg, A.T. Illich Road Roundabout, L.B. Scott Road from Emilio Wilson Park until Cake House Supermarket, Zaker's Gut from Petro Plus Gas Station until the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Welkalakin Road K Hill from Welkalakin Road Roundabout until the One Tete Loke Roundabout, Beacon Hill Road from Sunset Bar and Grill until the beginning of White Sands Road and Rhine Road, also known as Mullet Bay Road, after Sonesta Maho Beach Hotel to the entrance of Cooper Coy from the intersection of the University Drive until the intersection of Rio Grande. For more information on how you can keep yourself and your family safe this hurricane season, visit stmartingov.org forward slash hurricane. This public service announcement is brought to you by the government of St. Martin. Monkeypox is a disease caused by infection with the monkeypox virus. Monkeypox can spread to anyone. It is transmitted by prolonged close physical contact by anyone who has the disease or by touching objects, clothing, bedding, or towels and surfaces that have been used by someone with monkeypox. This illness typically lasts two to four weeks and is rarely fatal. This message is brought to you by the Collective Prevention Services. Hi, everyone. If you're just tuning in, I'm having a conversation with Mr. Silvanico Pauletta of the St. Martin Fire Department. He is the disaster management expert and, of course, responsible for Section PPL prevention, preparation, training, and education at the fire department. And we're talking about the various services that uh, the fire department renders to the public of St. Martin, next to helping us remain safe, of course, and uh, making sure that we are, um, as a community, we are protected uh, from disaster. Now, let's get into the actual services. No one, no one would ever imagine that the fire department actually gets into areas of permits and things of that sort, but you do. And then there is a cross-ministerial aspect. Take us through this process. How does it begin? What services are rendered to the public as it relates specifically to various permits? Well, for government to issue permits, it also um, meaning to say that government allow certain activities, allow certain buildings to be in the country, and government needs to do a particular screening to make sure that th- that whatever they allow is safe, that it will not cause harm 
or injuries within the society. And that's where the fire department as a safety expert comes in and advises on building permits, on, hin on hindrance permits, on operation licenses. Next to that also, the fire department issues the also, is also responsible for a particular license, which is the fireworks and explosion uh, related um, permits. Okay, so special events and that specific feature. Yes. Um, okay, explain. How does that work? So, when somebody wants to have an, um, a fireworks show, yeah. they apply in six weeks in advance and they submit what, actually, what kind of explosives they're going to use because fireworks are explosives. Cool. Um, what kind of fireworks they're going to use, what is the fire plan, what is the location and the safety measures they're taking. And once we screen that, we can, uh, we can approve it. But the fireworks themselves have an import, transportation, yes. and storage yes. aspect to it. Yes, uh, so indeed. See, um, what I just mentioned has to do with the show. But indeed, prior to that, there's also permits for import, permits for transport, because all those things brings a risk with them. Of course. And, and then we have the storage. They need to store at the location, and eventually they need to have the display or the sales. The, the fireworks um, decree that, that we have since the year 2000 yeah. actually stipulates what is consumer fireworks? So what fireworks can be sold to the, co uh, to, to the consumer for the two days, the three days that they actually granted to be used from the 29th of December to the 1st of January. Right. So, so that is consumer fireworks. And then the same decree also stipulates that there are um, special permits that can be granted for, for um, fireworks that are not to do with these consumer fireworks that are for the closing of the year, celebrating the new coming year, incoming year. So that's where we have those big shows and we advise on, indeed, the import, the, the transportation, but even export. Got it. So the Ministry of Romy, there's a cross-ministerial approach there between yourself in general affairs, fire department, and the Ministry of Rami. So it starts with them first, where you take your plans and indicate that you're planning to do the building. Um, give us an idea of then what happens after that process okay. and it transitions to you. So when somebody applies for a building permit or a hindrance permit, they go to Romi for that because it's um, the Ministry of Romi that actually issues the permit. And when they're there, they're, they receive also a list of fire safety measures that has to be um, in the drawings, in the application. Once that is, that is included in the, in, in the drawings, and then this, that, the, the Ministry of Romy will send it to us. Okay. And we advise on that, or it could be approved, our revision is needed based upon uh, what has been given to us. Oh, that, that could be unsettling if you have to get into the process of building and all of a sudden you hit a snag somewhere and you're, what would happen in that well, situation? Well, actually, actually, you apply before you start building. Okay, all right. Um, so that's the ideal situation where people actually apply before building. Right. And that's where we, where, where we see if some fire safety measures were overlooked. And that's where they can address it, adjust it. And once it meets the criteria, then it will be returned to Fromi where, where the, the permit issuing process continues. Usually the fire department has a target of two weeks to, to um, advise. But as I said, it could happen that um, revision is needed. Um, or maybe some drawings are missing, and this they will need to be be um, submitted. Also, what we do, we we take our time, if need be, to to sit with the sit with the applicant and explain 
what what actually was missing. It's all, all that to, to hands because we are not there to stop any projects. All we want to do is make sure that this it, that it's it meets the regulation because Saint Martin has a an, um, fire safety building code. It and it it is one for Saint Martin. Sometimes people come with um, with drawings based upon Dutch regulations, or they come based with um, American regulations, the NFPA. But we have our own fire safety code. It's heavy, heavy based on the Dutch one, yes. But at the same time, it also recognizes any comparable norm. And and um, so most of the time, we make it work as long as it meets the criteria. What are some of the key features that you're looking for right off the bat when someone comes and they're looking at fire safety at their, at their new building? What the fire department looks at in the first place is what is the intended usage? Because a parking lot or an office has different fire safety um, regulations, uh, different fire safety regulations apply to it compared to a hospital or a daycare where people are less mobile compared to um, where you have people who are alert and mobile or where you have people that are not knowledgeable with the location. So, for example, a hotel where you have people, the place is new for them, so it's easy for them to get disoriented in the case of an incident. There, other fire safety regulations apply compared to um, an office where people visit daily and work on a long term. Set me straight. I, I saw this term used, standpipe. I went through the American route. I know fire hydrant. So the first question came to mind was, is there a difference between these two types, a standpipe versus a fire hydrant, or are we talking about one and the same? Um, a hydrant is a hydrant. A standpipe is a standpipe. What a hydrant is, a hydrant is connected to the GB line. Okay. Or it could be connected to to um, a big system with a pump. But usually it's connected to the GB line. And when there's a fire, we come, we hook up to the hydrant, and that gives us the extra supply of water to deal with the fire. A standpipe is... For any building that has a floor that's higher than 10 meters from the ground, from the ground floor, that's where you have a standpipe so that the fire truck now that's connecting to the hydrant will con- will connect its pump also to to the standpipe so that it it uh, pumps the water from the hydrant through the standpipe up to the upper floors and. The, fire, the firefighters will actually come with the, with the hoses and everything, goes up the steps or a service elevator because a building that's high, that needs a standpipe also usually also needs a service elevator. So they, when, they, when they reach on the floor where they need to be, they, co- they connect to the, to the standpipe mm-hmm. and then go to the location to fight the fire. Okay. Once, once you finish your building, according to the safety regulations, uh, one is to inform the fire department, and then the fire department will come for an inspection of the building. So do they call you, email you? Yes, they can email us. Um, they, can, they can email us, which can, the email can be found on our website. Uh, usually you call your email uh, at the sylvanico.pauletta at stmartingov.org or kirk.richardson at stmartingov.org or also Edward Brooks, edward.brooks at stmartingov.org. Sylvanico, so as we are here, of course, the hurricane season is here. We always you know, talk about disaster management. I want to give you the opportunity once again to encourage the people of St. Martin as we are about to get into the peak of the hurricane season as the month of August is approaching. Uh, what would your words of advice be to the general public? As we enter the, the hurricane season, I would say 
I would just remind you of what you have heard before. It only takes one. Be ready. Clean around your yard. Check your roof. And have your hurricane shutters ready. That when the time comes that you don't have to run to no general store, but you're just ready uh, and that you can remain your calm and your cool. So Vanico Paulette, our disaster management expert and uh, responsibility for Section PPO Prevention, Preparation, Training, and Education at the Fire Department. Mr. Paulette, once again, thank you so much for being a part of the program. Thank you for having me, Cedric. And to our radio listeners, television viewers, online viewers, thank you for being a part of this conversation with Mr. Paul Letter. If you've missed it, be sure to catch video on demand at the official Facebook page of the Government of St. Martin, facebook.com forward slash SXMGOV. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com, Government of St. Martin. And for audio playback, tune in to St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM throughout the course of the day. On behalf of my colleagues down at the Fire Department of St. Martin, and of course all of us here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks so much for tuning in.